Hi, Jason here. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. And if you're following along, then double thanks. So the Great Guitar Build Off official entries are complete and they all look pretty awesome. And that just leaves us little guys left. So this will mark the point in my build where I stop talking and pointing at things and actually get some real woodworking done. So let's go check it out. Okay, so I'm still waiting for the neck to settle a little bit, and I really want to finish that before I start carving the body. So in order to not lose momentum, I have to start on the fretboard. I chose quarter sawn satin wood, which is beautiful stuff. It only takes a 30, 40 degree shift in viewing angle to completely reverse the grain color. And it's in the same general realm of hardness as ebony's and rosewood, so it really makes ideal fretboard material, but it's heavily interlocked. And as much as I try and as much as I sharpen, it will not cooperate with my planes. So I'm going to have to sand it into shape. I fixed my leveling beam down to the bench. And for the backside, I'm just going to set it here and gently scrub until it's perfectly flat. I'm not going to make you watch all of that. I'll edit most of this out, but this is the process. That looks great. Now I can move on to the sides. This is my edge sanding jig, which basically only consists of a lower level and an upper level. The upper level is where I set the wood. The lower level has a piece of Formica glued to it to act as a replaceable bushing to slide the sanding beam against. And the little valley in between is just to catch the dust so I don't have to worry about clearing it away. And I'm simply going to gently sand the sides until I approach my line and then flip the fretboard over and do the same thing. Okay, that's nice and straight. That's nice and straight. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, we're done with that. Now I need to put a radius on it. Unfortunately for me, I don't have a radius block wide enough for this neck. Which is kind of fortunate because I don't have a 16 inch radius block and that's the radius I want to put on it. So I'm going to have to sand this into radius by hand, which is pretty time consuming. On the plus side, satin wood smells kind of like buttercream iced cupcakes when you're working it, so I won't mind too much in that respect. Um, I could make a, a router jig to put the radius on, but I dare not touch this stuff with a router after seeing what my planes did to it. So I guess the best point now is to get myself set up for sanding. All right, I have everything prepped and ready to go here. I have at least five different kinds of double-sided tape up on the rack there, but since this is a Ben Crow deal, I have affixed masking tape to both sides and super glue. I'm going to start with 80 grit, then move up to 120, and then up to 150 to get the radius on here. At that point, I'll probably cut the fret slots, but let's get started.
Okay, I think I'm pretty much ready to move on to slotting. Let's set up the jig. This is my fret slotting setup. It's a nice little roller bearing miter box. The same basic design is available from several Luthier's tool suppliers, uh, one of which being Crimson Guitars. Um, and it's very nice. It has a locating pin and I have the fretboard set up on a notch template. So you cut the slot, slide it over to the next notch, cut the slot, slide it over to the next slot. It's pretty foolproof in that respect. And I'm using a fret saw with a depth stop and I've set that to just slightly deeper than the fret tang so I can make sure that it doesn't bottom out but still give me a little bit of room to re-level everything when I'm done with the fret marker inlays. So let's get started. And there we have it, one nicely slotted fretboard, and I believe I'm now ready to move on to the binding. So I'm set up and ready to start the binding. I have a whole bunch of masking tape strips cut into tiny little pieces, and I have my first binding strip, which is two ply sapili and maple. And I'm gonna do this just like everyone else does it pretty much and just put a little bit of glue on, spread it around and then tape the binding on. And I'll leave just a little bit above and below the fretboard so I can trim it all flush when I'm done.
Okay, everything looks nice and tight. I'm just gonna let that sit there and dry and come back and do the other side. All binding is done, tape removed, and I can call this a finished fretboard. Minus inlays and final sanding, of course, but I'm quite happy with the way this looks. So with that milestone complete, I can move on to the neck. I checked it earlier today and it seems to have stopped moving. Everything's looking ready to go there. So I'm gonna get to profiling and contouring and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.